Now let's talk about what makes information useful. So what we go through to in this video is the qualitative characteristics of financial information. Did you know that information had characteristics? Well, you'll learn more about it during this video. So first what we're going to do is talk about there's two major types. There's the fundamental characteristics and then there are the enhancing characteristics. We'll start with fundamental and fundamental basically is saying is it useful or not useful. It, it's considered useful if it is either relevant, it has relevance, or it has faithful representation. So those are the two key characteristics. Oftentimes these two are kind of in conflict with one another. You might want information that's more quick and timely, which would make it more relevant, but you want it to be as accurate as possible, which gives it faithful representation. So often there is a trade-off between these two. So let's take a closer look at what makes it relevant or faithful representation. Relevant. It has these three attributes. Predictive value. It helps us predict uh, various things in the future. So maybe net income this year helps us pr predict net income next year. It has confirmatory value, so it provides feedback about the uh, predictions that we already had. And then materiality, it kind of fits into this category, it kind of floats all over the conceptual framework to be honest, but basically you, it's material if it would affect our decisions if we had um, ignored it or had done it improperly. So materiality, we'll see this come into play from time to time as we look at various ways that we report and account for um, certain transactions. Okay, so that's relevant. It has predictive, confirmatory, and materiality. And I like to use the example of what if you're deciding which college to go to? What information is relevant to you? How about the cost? And you know often you, you know the cost of your freshman year, but wouldn't it be nice to be able to predict what your overall cost might be over the four years that you're at college? So you want to be able to predict and then have information that's relevant to you to help make that decision. So it's similar to that. It's information and you need it. Um, you need it to, to make the decisions today. Faithful representation is basically, does it depict what it is supposed to depict? And we use this term, the substance of the economic event. So is it, you know, is a revenue really a revenue? Is an expense really an expense? So that's what faithful representation means. When we look at that balance sheet and it lists all our assets, we would like it to be as complete and as neutral and as free from error as possible. The same with our liabilities. The same with our income statement when it comes to revenues and expenses. So those are the three attributes, complete, neutral, and free from error. And the free from error, let's just talk about this a little bit more. There are no mistakes or omissions. Well, you know, nothing's perfect and we don't always have accurate information. But at the time, we want to make sure that we're not using any bias to um, make our estimates. You know, a lot of times accountants, we have to actually estimate amounts. So we'll learn more about that in future chapters. But we want to use the best information we have to be as accurate as possible, free from error to the extent that we can. So those are our two big ones. Relevance, faithful representation. That makes it useful. There are other characteristics that are called enhancing characteristics. And these are things that we'd like and we would, you know, would prefer to have them if we can. But um, it's, it's when we're distinguishing between various alternatives of how to report for something. If we go ahead and meet relevance and faithful representation, to the extent that we can add these enhancing characteristics, it means our financial information is going to be even better for those investors, creditors, lenders for them to make decisions. Okay, so here are enhancing characteristics. We have comparability. So we want to be able to look at different companies, maybe in the same industry, perhaps a an investor is trying to decide which of the tech companies it wants to invest in. So it wants to be able to compare them. Well, one of the things that helps with comparability is that we uh, 
you know the balance sheet looks similar when we list them and we compare them that way so comparing different entities to the extent that we can enhance comparability that's great for our financial statement users verifiability is another key one we want to be able to say if three or four people went in and tried to measure and record something would they be able to come to a consensus that the information is you know it is what it is so does it really represent the underlying economic event so verifiability to the extent that we can have that we need it it helps especially when it comes to auditing right we want to be able to verify the amounts in the financial um, statements the other two are timeliness timely information we like the information to be available as early as possible so it can help us with decision making and then finally understandability we want the information to be presented in a way that reasonably informed people that have maybe business degrees people that are business um, th they have business experience a reasonably informed person can actually look at the financial statement and be able to figure out what it's really saying so I like to think about this when it comes to disclosure notes we want to be able to read those disclosure notes and understand what they're talking about so those are our four enhancing characteristics and this picture is a nice summary of the uh, all of the characteristics here we have our fundamental and our enhancing this is available in your textbook um, maybe put a little tab on this so that you can always refer to this page as necessary well when we look at all these qualitative characteristics you know to have everything that we want it's relevant it's faithfully representative it's it's timely it's comparable we want all those good things but there is a limit we can only provide the information to the extent that it is um, it cost beneficial so there's a cost of providing information and the benefit of providing that information has to be considered when we look at the cost of providing it so to the extent that at some point a lot of times on these comment letters when there's new policies being considered uh, some of the comments will be the cost of providing this information will be very difficult and if you remember in chapter one we talked about this uh, trend towards fair value and that we try to use fair value to the extent possible on certain assets and liabilities and what happens is fair value requires an additional cost to find the fair value we know historical cost because we have a verifiable way of looking at it there's a invoice and there's this a way you can just look at the original cost but to find its fair value of an asset 5, 10, 15 years after we have purchased it, well, um, that's a little bit of, uh, it definitely costs more. But when fair value reporting started coming out, yeah, the big worry was cost. But what we found is that there have been ways to minimize the cost and provide the information. So that wraps up our qualitative characteristics and in our next video we're going to go on to what's called the elements of the conceptual framework.